Hi, I'm Aaron, and welcome to my YouTube channel, Keep Painting Minis, where we, well, keep painting minis. Today we're going to paint some of the crew from Black Powder Red Earths, Cold Harbor Crisis Troop Scorch. Those are paramilitary contractors. So meet me right back here, and let's get started. And since most of our base coating is going to be contrast paints, we're going to prime with um, off-white, which is made by the white Steinol Res with just a couple of drops of the beige Steinol Res mixed in, shot through the airbrush. Our first base coat is going to be a denim blue cover for the denim pants of the contractors. And we've put that together with the contrast paints, mostly Space Wolf Gray, seven drops of Space Wolf Gray with just one drop of Ultramarine Blue because the Ultramarine Blue is a strong color. So that's all you need to get it to this terrific denim color. You can see I'm actually using a filbert brush here that's got a wide tip and that allows for a more consistent spreading of the paint when I apply it to the model. And then I go in where I find pooling with a dry traditional narrow tip brush to wick away any of the pooling. Now, as you'll see, this first coat of contrast, according to that mix, dries a little bit light and translucent, so we're gonna go in to finish off the denim with the same mix, but adding five drops of contrast medium to make it even more translucent, and you'll see that's gonna dry just right to give us the denim color that we want. Next, we're coming in with the contrast paint Black Templar for the backpack and all of the, essentially all of the other gear and the gun and the helmet. And again, you'll see I'm using this wide tipped filbert because I found that's the best way to apply these contrast paints and you lightly brush the tip across the surfaces and let the model quick the liquid off of the brush and this is the best way to try to avoid and it's not always perfect but to try to avoid that pooling that we often experience with the contrast paints you've got your thick brush thick tip and you are gently bringing the tip to the model and essentially letting the model through capillary action quick the paint off of the brush and then you have your ordinary narrow tip dry brush at the ready to wick away any pooling. And when you wick away the pooling, you want to pull it in the direction where it tends, where it's tending to settle. And you've got to do that quickly because once contrast paint does begin to dry, you just don't want to touch it. If there are things to fix, then you come in and fix them later. And next we're gonna come in again with another base coat. We're going for an olive color on the t-shirt of a couple of these characters. And for that, we're going in with um, the contrast paint, Militarum Green, right out of the pot. You're gonna see at the end of the process that I'm gonna come in with some traditional acrylics to smooth out the 
blotchiness of the contrast here. It looks pretty good already. Uh, if you just want to get tabletop quality quickly, just leave it at the contrast. But you'll see at the end we'll come in with some acrylics to tidy it up a little bit. But note again that I've got my dry ordinary brush at the ready to wick away the pooling to limit the blotchiness of the contrast paint. And next we're coming in with a little dry brushing to highlight the black portions, the gear and the gun. Uh, again, I have not the traditional round tip brush, but a flat tip brush, a dry brush, a little bit of paint, wipe it almost all off on your paper towel, go in there from top to bottom very gently, be patient, and these models, the texture of these models, uh, particularly on the portions that are black, um, suit themselves wonderfully for this dry brush step. And the paint I'm using, I love the Pro Acryl, is the bright warm gray from the Pro Acryl line. Now, of course, you'll see as we often experience with dry brushing that in some areas it does get a little lighter than we want it to be and a little chalky. Uh, so you'll see a step toward the end of our process here. Well, I'll go in with some Nuln Oil. Um, and just sort of selectively take down any of the flat surfaces that uh, from this bright dry brushing uh, turned out to be a little too bright or a little too chalky. We'll see that later in the process. And next we're coming in to take care of the boots. We're going to give them a desert color with our contrast Agaros Dune. Again, load up the brush with plenty of liquid. I've got my Filbert somewhat flat, flat tip so that I can leave a lot of paint on the model with one stroke. Gently touching that tip to the boot, wicking away where we see pooling. Now for one of our contractors, we're going to give him a desert tan t-shirt and for that we're going in with our contrast skeleton horde. Now skeleton horde is a terrific contrast color for many, re for many purposes. Uh, it's a bit translucent to get the opacity that we want here so I went in ultimately with two coats. And then as you'll see at the end, I did come in with some ordinary acrylics to tidy things up. Next we're coming in for the skin with the Gilliman Flesh. This is really my go-to in every case for Caucasian skin. Again, I've got the thick, thick brush so that I can put on plenty of paint with one stroke. Gently letting the paint wick off the brush. Wicking away the pooling where I see it. And then when the contrast dries, we'll come in with some Kiss Left Flesh to tidy things up and also some Bugman's Glow to smooth out the shadows and the transitions from the shadows to the midtones and highlights. But keep in mind, we are keeping this very simple and quick, and I think the quality that we get from this process is terrific with that in mind. We really got four base coat colors of contrast and then for the flesh and the shirt we've come in with some we'll come in with some acrylics to tidy things up we don't need to touch the denim we barely touch the black areas so it's really five six quick steps 
And you've got uh, a terrific look on these models as we'll see when we get to the end of our process. So next we're coming in with a glaze of Pro Acryl Yellow Ochre uh, mixed with the glaze medium to get it to a fairly translucent glaze consistency to smooth out that Desert Tan t-shirt so that we eliminate any of the blotchiness that we were left with from the contrast base coat application. And then similarly we'll come in with the Pro Acryl Mahogany to smooth out, sort of enhance and better define the dark areas of that desert tan t-shirt. We're getting in the recesses, we're getting around the edges, the transitions between the equipment and the shirt and between the flesh and the shirt with this mahogany. And next we're coming in with Nuln Oil to take down some of the chalkiness of the dry brushing and any of the highlights that are a little too bright. And again, this is a super quick and easy step. And now we're going to come back with the Bright Warm Gray Pro Acryl glazed down with glazed medium to pick out any of the highlights that we want to give special attention to beyond what we gave them with the dry brushing. And next we're going to come in with a series of colors to get after the sunglasses and the night vision goggle optics and the optics on the rifle. So we're going to layer up. We're going to start with the burnt red on almost the entire sunglasses, leaving a little bit at the top of the sunglasses still black. Then a little bit less moving toward the bottom of the bright red. Then a little bit less moving toward the bottom of the orange. Then just a super small edge highlight of the bottom of the glasses with the yellow. On the night vision goggles and the rifle, we're starting with the burnt red on the entire circle. Then a little bit less, not all the way to the edges with the red. Then less, not all the way to those edges with the orange and just a small dot of yellow right in the center. And it's subtle, but it's a super eye-catching feature of the paint job, so it's definitely worth a little bit of extra time. And then to finish off the sunglasses, we're going in with a tiny dot of the Pro Krill Titanium White. A little bit of what we call the specular highlight, that little dot of white that shows up on a reflective surface like the sunglasses. And next we're going in after another small detail that's a little bit eye-catching and fun to do, which is the carabiner 
hook on the belt that holds the zip ties. We're going in with Vallejo Metal Color Copper. And then we're going to come in with some steel for the little clip at the center of that carabiner. And now we're going to go in with some Nuln Oil to add some shading and depth and bring the shininess down on that carabiner we just painted. And then we're going to also use the Nuln Oil to add some separation in between those zip ties that are hanging from the carabiner. And then I'm coming in with a little bit of white to touch up those zip ties where I was a little too liberal with the Nuln Oil. And now we're on the home stretch with just a couple of more touch-ups, including this uh, Pro Acryl Pale Yellow to hit some highlights on that desert tan brownish colored t-shirt that we gave this one particular contractor. So I'm just finding the top of the folds and the pale yellow is a little bit of a glaze consistency, not right out of the pot. I always work from the wet palette and just finding the highlights again super quick super simple but really add some definition and similarly for the green t-shirts a glaze of bright yellow for the highlights and green camo for the recesses and shadows and with that our contractors are mission ready stage hand prepare the velvet curtain please and reveal I hope you liked watching the video as much as I enjoyed painting the model. And if you did, be sure to hit the like. And we're coming out with videos regularly. Be sure to hit the subscribe and share this video with those who might be interested. So thanks for coming. I know I'll see you back here on the channel real soon. And until then, keep painting minis.